Today we are going to crash two electric Mercedes-Benz SUVs inside of this crash lab. Dream come true. I've always wanted to see two cars crash together in an official lab. Is this safe? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. This is the actual control center for the entire place. So the people that push the button that makes the cables go. Can we go inside of that? Yeah, sure. Look at this, man. And cup and that looks like a stick Is that you hit somebody. And cup and sheet. I mean, this just looks like a weapon. And cup and I don't think it's a weapon. And cup and but look at this guy. And cup and sheet. This is it. This is the control center. Coat hanger is properly marked. <laughs> Very safe up the coat hanger spot. Oh, so the chair. Hold on a second. There we go. What? Who did this? Yeah. Oh, that is it. Come on. This is the control center, and you can see the many different angles. They don't even have to watch it with their own eyes. They can just watch the video camera. So these are the three buttons right here. Don't push. It doesn't work. There we go. Yeah, it's it all pushing the buttons. Yeah, it you can see the monitors. There's the cars that are going to hit in today's video. These beautiful cars. Mercedes EQS SUV and a Mercedes EQA. They have test dummies inside of them. Crash test dummies cost $1 million a piece. We've got two in here, two in there. It's your big day tomorrow, dummies. You excited or what? These dummies have over 150 sensors inside. They measure different forces, different compressions, and those measurements are directly linked to possible human injuries. So they have a female driving the car that's going to crash. So it's lighter, it's a little scooted up a bit more. They have a male riding as the passenger in here. And then in the other car, the EQA, you've got, looks like a female driving and a female passenger. Good luck, dummies. <laughs> I mean, look at all these cables. You just have cables running to capture all of the data. And here we go. Okay, so this is a normal car but it has a lot of measuring devices inside of it. My goodness, look at that. So this is picked out of the production line, but then they add in a few different things for the sensors. You also have these little circles, and these are going to be measured by cameras. The first crash test ever was done in 1959, and it was done by Mercedes-Benz. So that was four years after the car that I drove in the Mila Mila that I was super scared about driving because I didn't even have a seatbelt. And there was a steel beam about an inch away from my head that if we got into an accident, I would hit my head against it. I don't see how I could even have survived that day. And honestly, it was a little nerve wracking. We were fine, we drove safe, we raced through the streets of Italy and it was good. A lot of the safety features that we have inside of our cars today, I feel like we've taken for granted. At least I have many of times. That trip to Italy really put things into perspective for me and made me appreciate the safety features that we have inside of our cars right now. And every single year, cars are getting safer and safer. And Mercedes-Benz has been at the forefront of all of this testing. And so they used the orange because it stood out and they could see it on the camera better. Well, nowadays, obviously, we have really, really good cameras that can capture all of the data. So. It's not as important now what the color is like. It's kind of nostalgic and Mercedes-Benz wants to stick with the orange color. But what's more important is that they have the matte finish on here so that it's not too shiny so that the cameras pick up everything properly. So now we're turning off the super, super bright lights, but we have them for a reason. This is a high speed camera right here that shoots at about a thousand frames a second. We've got another one right there. We have some across the way. When you have a high speed camera, it's really important when it's that really high frames per second that you have the room really, really bright so that it can capture everything. There's even cameras underneath the car looking up to watch the crash. This is what it looks like from up top. And this is what it looks like from underneath the car. And they do some painting on the bottom so that they can measure everything properly. This one right here, really, really high speed. I know I said a thousand frames per second, but it turns out they're like 3000 frames a second. So really, really fast cameras, really bright lights. This is one of three tracks that Mercedes-Benz has inside of this crash test facility. This is 250 meters deep. And right here on the ground, you can see these lines. There's cables that are on here. So kind of like a trolley car and cars will get pulled all the way down here and crash into different things. This giant wall that we're looking at right now is 500,000 pounds. Sometimes they'll hit it straight on, sometimes on the angle. This is a much smaller concrete barrier. It's only 100 tons. But the cool thing about this one is it's movable, it's mobile. I just wanna stay here and just watch a bunch of crashes. Here's another one on this side. Man, what a cool job. This one's like you hit a light pole right there. Oh, that's hardcore right there. Man. All right, let me take you to where we're gonna be for the launch. This 
is our room right here. And we're going to have 50 journalists from all over the world are going to be in here. Oh, that's thick glass, super thick glass. One car is gonna come from down that way and fly down and the other one's gonna come from over here and fly and they should crash somewhere around that area. These are all the lights. I could just stand right here. I'm pretty tall. It says, I think that says stand here. Here, Steven. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like I'm in like an underground bunker hiding from the world. All these different sensors and everything. The ground is painted. Everything's so clean. Everything's concrete. I don't know. It's just like those movies where people are stuck in bunkers and living there for hundreds of years. You're aware of the brightness. Here we go. Here we go. They said it would be loud. They were right. Okay, we need to get down there. But first, they have a few safety checks. There's the firefighters. They come down. They look to see if there's any heat or fire. All right, it looks like there's a thumbs up. Firemen have said, we are good. But this is an electric car. The next thing that has to happen is the electrical team comes down. They connect to the vehicle and they make sure there is no high voltage electricity, danger hazards. And it looks like the electricity side of it is good. All right, let's go look at the carnage. This is it, the firefighters are leaving the scene. That's usually a good sign, I would think. <laughs> look at that, that tire popped right there. It's still on the vehicle. What's up dummies? survive according to all the data that they captured from the dummies these things are safe and there's a very very low probability of a major injury from them obviously people are built different if you have an 80 year old versus like a 16 year old you could have weird things that happen in car crashes but the cabin looks fine yeah they survived they're good cars leaning a little bit you can see the pink all over the ground there's no gasoline inside of the car but there is coolant inside the batteries have to have coolant to stay warm and to stay cool in the winter, in the summer. This whole bumper right here is missing a headlight, but I think I know what happened. I think it just like popped out and went right there on the ground and we just got a headlight, just chilling right there. Check this out. The door still opens. Inside of here, the airbags did deploy and you can tell that there's still room in here for the driver. Okay, Oops. I'm hopping in. There we go. We're in the car. I still have leg room. Yeah, the airbag deployed. Okay, one of the things I think is really interesting is we've got this side airbag, we have the steering wheel airbag, we have this front airbag, which you can see where the dummy actually hit it, but no side airbag deployed on this side. Now I asked the engineers, why didn't they all deploy? We got in an accident and they said, well, we didn't need them for that accident. It can sense which airbags need to be deployed for which accident. Mercedes-Benz is the only vehicle that I know of that has an airbag that can pop out right here in the middle. So say you got hit on a side impact, there's one that pops up so that I don't go this way and the other passenger so we don't hit heads. It actually protects you right here. And let's say, for example, you get hit, you're in the freeway, and then as you're waiting, another car comes and hits this side, well then these other airbags can deploy. So even though the main power might be shut off from the vehicle, the 12 volt battery is still running after you hit, and some of the airbags can deploy to protect you from a second or a third impact coming from different directions. I feel like when it comes to safety, there's a lot of misconceptions about electric cars versus gas cars and how safe they really are. And a lot of the misconceptions come from media. It's not like if you crash an electric car that it's going to immediately catch on fire. Can it catch on fire? Yes. Obviously, if it was a big enough accident and if the battery pack was punctured. And a battery fire runs hotter and longer than what a gas fire does. But at the same time, a gas car, you literally have explosions happening. Gas explodes! 
Do you know? Inside of the car to move the car along, you have a fuel tank. There's plenty of cars that catch on fire that are gas cars. So it could be that the gas cars are actually more dangerous than the electric cars. Now, when I talk to Mercedes Benz, they don't have any bias. They say that we want to make our gas and electric cars, all of our cars have the same safety standards, which I applaud. That's fantastic. But in my mind, there's a few things that make an electric car safer. First of all, this whole section right here has what's called a crumple zone. Because we don't have an engine block sitting in the front like a gas car would have, we have these structural beams that are put in here. Even this one right here is bent on an angle so that it can absorb it. This beam is there to crumple and also protect the driver. And so by having this entire area in the front that can crumple up, it can make it so that your actual spot inside of the cabin is safer. And when it comes to electric car safety and protecting the sled that's on the bottom, the sled is like the area with the batteries on the bottom, they have built in a lot of different things to make sure that that battery pack has the lowest chance of getting punctured or hit. For example, there's the driver's seat right there. Underneath here is where the battery is. This cast aluminum has a honeycomb structure that will be able to crumple up and absorb some of the pressure if a car was hit right here in order to protect the sled that's underneath there with all the batteries. So when an electric car gets in an accident, does it look kind of nasty in the front? Yeah, it looks like it's been hit, but it's doing its job. It is crumpling up. It is taking, absorbing, that direct hit so that the cabin can stay safe. But the crumple zone does more than just protect the driver inside of this car. It does a really good job at protecting the driver of the car that you're crashing into. I don't care how good of a driver you are, accidents can happen. That's why it's called an accident. It's gonna happen at some point and it's nice when you have a car that is very safe for you. There's a lot to the safety that I never really thought of until I came to the safety lab. It's pretty wild. Thanks for watching. Also today I brought Corey, which Corey has been in a lot of our videos in the past, and he is a master with video cameras. So um, <laughs> right now we're creating a thing. He's got the camera on the tripod and he's setting up all the dummies into different spots and then walking away so that our editor, Jason, can make something really cool with it. I feel like they're gonna attack me. Like they're gonna all of a sudden turn their face and just be like, oh, come here, dummy. Oh, that guy's like, I want the Mercedes logo. Yeah, he's taking that home with him. Smart move right there. He's just taking it. <laughs> I just take, he's just taking the Mercedes logo. That's kind of smart now. I wish I would have found the Mercedes logo. Perfect. They told me do not look at the lights because I might be blinded.